Welcome back, and I'm here to share with everyone yet another amazing EDC knife by Riot. I'm speaking on the all new Iron Flipper knife. I've been hearing about this in-house design by Riot for about three months. Then one day about two weeks ago, they popped up at distributors. So I decided to snag one before they were all sold. The Iron Knife has two flipper type designs, one with a flipper tab and another with thumb studs. I myself went with the thumb studded version. At the moment, I believe flipper tab deployment is a bit saturated and overrated. The thumb studs were definitely a nice change in frame anatomy for me. Let's get into the specs on this awesome knife. Coming in with an overall length of 7.5 inches, a blade length of 3.25 inches, a cutting edge of 2.875 inches, the blade width is 1.25 inches, the blade thickness is 0.16 inches, the blade is a spear point comprised of bowler M390 with a flat grind and a satin finish. Weighing in at 4.8 ounces with a right hand only tip up titanium mill pocket clip and a frame locking system. This particular variant has the green micarta inlays and the handle is titanium along with blue anodized hardware. Other than being intrigued by Riot and its releases as of late, I was drawn to this particular knife due to the thumb studs and their peculiar shapes plus the reverse angle jimping. And these serve more as like thumb platforms to me, which can be held and manipulated in many different ways. Just another reason I decided on this particular setup. And this thing can be thumb deployed by flicking or by slow rolling, or as I like to call it, doing the sabenza, which is so damn smooth because of the ceramic ball bearings. The good old pinch grip slip joint deployment, the reverse or middle finger flick, and then there's two that I really wouldn't suggest. The gravity drop and the handle drop, or also known as the spidey drop. And even though I love a great flipper tab, the thumb studs array of deployment options can't be touched by the tabs. As for my thoughts on the iron, I know everybody here wants to know about the action on the knife. And I'm sorry to not disappoint, but yeah, it's super glassy. The tolerance make the blade feel like it's on rails. And by that I mean locked in. The detent is very strong, I believe in order to contrast the iron's massive blade. The deployment is very mechanical and enhanced by the iron's detent ramp. And after overcoming this ramp on the retraction, the glossiness is continued. With either two hands or one, the buttery slide is apparent. And on the drop shut, the blade's weight is just enough to self-rotate on the pivot with the slightest angling of handle direction. And then it slips past the detent. The feeling is like no other. I could open and shut this knife all damn day. Just flick the day off messing with this iron. The frame lock is also very smooth in operation and to the touch. There's no tab that would be rough or have a bad angle. So flippers finger fatigue is something I won't suffer from with this folder. Also, I can use more of the blade when cutting down to any work surface due to there not being a finger tab protruding the base of the frame. This also means no finger choil, which I would rather have more cutting edge than a choil as long as my handle is long enough for my four fingers. And in this case, it definitely is. Now let's move on to the appearance and the materials as well as the fit and finish. As for the look of this knife, well, I love it. I've always looked at the Poison and the Helios knives. I feel the aesthetics of this knife, the iron, play right into the futuristic crossover look, like something you would find on the third level in Halo. The Mike Carter inlays, which mounts are found basically behind the top titanium inlay, so this is basically layered inlays, and yet and still I can't feel any of the seams whatsoever. On the non-show side of the knife, the inlay pattern is milled into the titanium, with the addition of milled texture lines that provide adequate grip. And here on the non-show side is where the anodized hardware really shines. Whether it's because it's the only accent on this side or that there are five screws on this side and only two on the other, I really don't know, but it definitely looks good. The backspacer is a solid chunk of titanium with some thick but non-aggressive jimping with the lanyard slot recessed into the end. The pocket clip is also milled from solid titanium and a mirror image but just flipped around of the front upper titanium inlay that rests under the pivot. Sturdy and snug enough to hold the five ounce knife in the pocket or on the waistband, but not enough tension to be a nuisance when retrieving it, like getting caught up on the lip of jeans, a belt, or whatever else you may clip it to. Now onto the weight of the iron, 4.8 ounces. And with most people's EDC standards that warrant an ounce per inch of blade, this is way beyond that. I find a more substantial knife to be satisfying for me. I would rather the weight addition with contouring than a weight reduction with flat handles. Many enthusiasts believe the iron to be a light run by Ria with only 200 production pieces. So if you see it and you want it, you might want to jump on it quick. This is my new mid-size go-to everyday carry. Subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.